Welcome to this Spurning Earth tutorial on Earth Middle School. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the north. So, I'd like to start off this tutorial by reviewing a little bit about what we went over in the last tutorial. So I've gone ahead and fired up Earth Null School, and this is what we've got. So when we first fire it up, we can click around and we can look at wind patterns at the surface. And I haven't done anything with this overlay uh, selector, height selector over here. I'm just looking at winds at the surface. If we zoom in here, we can explore pretty easily and get a sense of what's happening with the wind patterns. So here off the south coast of Italy, for example, we have this nice cyclone that's developed. We have winds coming up off the Sahara Desert, the north coast of Africa here, getting pulled into this low pressure center. We have more winds flowing up here through the Adriatic Sea on the coast of you know uh, Croatia, Montenegro over here, Corfu. And this general pattern of southerly winds is um, persistent over the Mediterranean. If we come over here and take a look at the wind itself, we have, you know, that the wind is going at 35k. But we also have this number here, this 165 degrees. And what this refers to is the direction that the wind is coming from. So in this case, the wind is coming from the south, and that's 165 degrees. So in order to explain this, I've pulled up an inset, which shows how the... Um, degrees of the circle map onto the common directions of north, south, east, and west. So if we click around, we can see that this number changes and then relate it to the direction that the wind is coming from. To get a better sense of this, we can swing over here and look at this nice cyclone that's developed off the coast of Portugal. On the north side of the cyclone, we have winds coming from the east, so we have approximately 90 degrees. Over here, we have winds coming from the north. We have approximately zero degrees. In this case, 355 degrees indicates that the wind is coming from a bit west of north, remembering that zero degrees is due north. So if we swing over here just a little bit, you can see we have 15 degrees indicating that the wind is coming from just east of north. And if we come on the south part of the cyclone here, we see that this is approximately 270 degrees, indicating that the wind is coming from the west. So we can also take a look at the temperatures and explore a little bit and see what's going on at the surface with temperatures. So here at Sagres Promontory, uh, we have about 16 point, or 15.6 degrees, rather. Here near Gibraltar, we have about 13.8 degrees, straight of Gibraltar here. Here in Ibiza, we have about 14.1 degrees. You know, we can look around and get a sense of what's happening overall with temperatures. Going back to wind, it's pretty much straightforward to step up in the atmosphere as well. Earth Null School makes this really easy. We can go up a little bit in the atmosphere, just 100 meters or so, and get a sense of how the winds are getting stronger coming up here off the Sahara Desert. Going up to where water freezes, we have a bit different patterns. And then swinging up to the jet stream, we have these patterns. And looking at the jet stream, we can just zoom out and see how the jet stream is more of a planetary phenomenon. The structures are a lot larger. Um, everything is very wavy with these jet streams. Um, and this is, I guess, taking a moment to comment on abrupt climate change. I mean, this is very anomalous wind behavior with the jet stream. I mean, we don't have one single flow of air. We have multiple flows of air interacting with each other. And this is what we're going to continue to see with abrupt climate change. So if we swing back to the surface, we can get a sense that all of the wind patterns are somehow much more local. Things are happening on a smaller scale, influenced by you know, the land masses, perhaps your ocean temperatures. There's a lot of factors that go into generating these wind patterns. So it's also interesting to look at this MSLP quantity. So if we click on that, we're going to get a nice map which shows the pressure at various places. And this is great because it gives us an idea of what's happening with wind patterns because wind patterns are generated, of course, by differences in pressure. So if we click here on Ibiza, we can see that we have a pressure of 1,014 hectopascals. And this is the same unit that appears down here. 
Often this is also known as 1014 millibars. It's another uh, name, unit name for hectopascals. If we come over here into this cyclone, we can see that we have 1001 hectopascals. So the blue purple regions are lower pressure, and if they're very low pressure, they become red. And white regions and yellow regions tend to refer to areas of higher pressure. It's important to note that this is kind of an extrapolated pressure for the case of land. So if we were standing in the Alps here, if we can swing over to the temperature map to really be standing in the Alps, because we're in the mountains, the pressure might be lower because we're higher up from the surface. So when we look at this MSLP, this means sea level pressure, the pressure in the Alps is extrapolated down to sea level then. So everything is kind of equilibrated and normalized in this map with, with the wind patterns. And with these high pressure areas, you get a general sense that the air is flowing outwards from this high pressure area and it flows into the low pressure areas. So high pressure areas behave like sources in the atmosphere and low pressure areas behave as sinks. And on the boundaries of these two areas, we have a strong wind pattern developing. For example, over here, off the coast of uh, Newfoundland Island here, St. John's, we have this large low pressure area. And we also have it interacting with this high pressure dome. And then on the other side of this high pressure dome, we have another low pressure area. So you have northerly winds over here, and you have southerly winds over here, over the open ocean. So I think it's also interesting to look at the total precipitable water. And if you remember from the last uh, segment, especially the one on the Caribbean jet in the last tutorial as well, uh, we commented a lot about the total precipitable water and this concept of warm, moist air moving, moving northwards and getting pulled into these low pressure areas. And this is generally what low pressure areas tend to do because they're associated with warm, moist air. We have warm, moist air flowing in here and it's rising. And there's a kind of vacuum effect that's created when that happens because the warm air wants to rise up and it's uh, less dense than cold air. And over here, air from the high pressure zones are getting pooled in. So in the next tutorial series, I want to try to strengthen the connection between relative humidity and uh, total precipitable water because it's not quite clear exactly how these two are related. Um, and I think it's also important to understand. So if you're interested in that, I look forward to having you along for that. So I hope you enjoyed this second segment for the Burdinger tutorial series on Earth Null School. If you did, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening.